Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. And welcome back to Chelsea News. Yes, I realize I look a little bit like a Frenchman. Bienvenue, mon ami. It's just, I just turned out like this. Uh, today, we're going to be reacting to the story of how Todd Bowley's consortium won preferred bidder. Like, what happened? How did we get here along the way? And can Sir Jim Ratcliffe still sneak in and buy Chelsea. Mm? It's a, maybe it's a possibility. Please do consider dropping a like on the video to show your support on the content. Uh, and you are all, of course, welcome to subscribe to this channel as we sort of edge closer and closer to that wonderful landmark of 150,000 subscribers, mate. Lovely scenes, incredible indeed. Now, for this information, while I look French, I might as well talk some French. We're going to reference a journalist called Ben Jacobs. He's done a Twitter thread taking us through the situation, what happened. If you'd like to follow this gentleman, it's at Jacobs Ben. And um, yeah, he gives us basically a full uh, lowdown. It's not too long and complicated, so don't worry about that. We're going to just react accordingly. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, Bowley and uh, Ratcliffe again afterwards. There is an article up on The Athletic that gives detail as well on the final stages and what the situation with Ratcliffe is and who he is and etc. Because many of you who don't know who Sir Jim Ratcliffe is, he of course has tried to buy Chelsea before and has tested the resolve of Roman Abramovich before when the club wasn't for sale. Excuse me, like years ago. So yeah, yeah and you know, who is that guy? Anyway, so let's start beginning reading this thread from Ben Jacobs, who's been excellent in terms of keeping up with what's going on with the Chelsea bid. So, uh, shout out to him. A little more detail on a dramatic 24 hours in the Chelsea Football Club sale. The Todd Bowley-led group is the preferred bidder and will enter into a short exclusive period, brackets, believed to be about one week, to, uh, to sign a purchase agreement. So, yeah, he... No, no matter what's happened with Ratcliffe, Bowley has been confirmed the preferred bidder. He's gone through the long process. He was first in. He's last out because he made it. And um, he's basically... Yeah, we'll, we'll read on, and this will give you some detail. As of Friday, exclusive talks had not started, uh, and the exact terms must be agreed. Um... Picking a preferred bidder had to be concluded first, and Rain and Chelsea only formally did this yesterday. Interesting to hear, so Chelsea picked them as well, I guess. As with the first round, the rejected suitors were informed first. So before hearing you got through the first round, or you, you were like, you know, being considered, all the other guys were getting told they hadn't been. So a lot of people just assumed they were through because like, well, we haven't had the call yet. I guess we're through to the next round. Exciting, stressful, and um, if not a bit peculiar because let's be real, everything about this is peculiar. So Pagliuca, of course, uh, Pagliuca is the uh, Celtics owner, Atalanta owner. Um, you know, he came in relatively late. Uh, his plans for renovating Stamford Bridge lacked a clear roadmap and no written confirmation of if, how, he planned to scale back Atalanta was provided. Of course, his other club. How would that work? What would he do with his ownership? In fact, it seemed kind of like worrying and problematic because he was talking about almost like joining the clubs in certain ways, which would, of course, could be hugely problematic in the Champions League. Um, a public statement reaffirming his commitment only provided more questions. So with the roadmap of Stamford Bridge, that's something Bowley's consortium did really, really well. They presented that terrain like this is exactly how we'll redevelop Stamford Bridge. Something that I explained in my video yesterday, my like reaction to Bowley getting preferred bidder. He, uh, they pretty much had it locked down. You know, when everyone else was sort of maybe a bit like, oh, I don't know, we'll sort of do this. He's like, no, we'll do this. And this is exactly how we're going to redevelop the stadium. Hugely important for Rain. So Pagliuca eliminated. Broughton's bid required partial funding via loans. This counted against the bid uh, in a decision based on fine margins. The quote, celebritization, end quote, as, the, as one rain source put it, of the bid wasn't well received either and was seen as a move to turn the sale into some sort of popularity contest. 
Of course, what he's referencing there is Serena Williams, the Real Madrid fan, tennis player, and Lewis Hamilton, the Arsenal fan, uh, Formula One driver. Uh, basically bringing them in, saying, look, famous sport, and, you know, of course, both of them in their own right, massive, massive sporting icons. So hugely, you know, elements of population contest. If you ask any Chelsea fan who support the club and, you know, people around Chelsea, and you said, Lewis Hamilton and Serena Williams, they'd be like, so? (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't care. Like, that's not going to help us. And ultimately, you know, it was Reign's responsibility to uh to make sure it's gonna be good for Chelsea, it's gonna support Chelsea, <clears throat> and also with Brighton's bid, partial funding via loans, big red flag there as well. Of course, um again to reference Bowley, who's one preferred bidder, they had immediate access to the funds necessary to get everything over the line. So you start bringing in like, oh, I'll get a little bit of money off him. I'm gonna borrow some off my mum, my best mate's sister. He said he could put a tenner in, and hopefully we can get it together. Now nah, you don't want any of that, man. So, like I said, Broughton uh, out. He joins Pagliuca. So at this point, you've got Bowley and then maybe sort of Ratcliffe float, floating around. Let's read on. But above all else, this this is the sort of like stamping it. But above all else, Bowley's bid just stood out. One of the reasons why is because in each area suitors were asked to focus on, the group provided real experts. Like I said, first in... Whenever they were asked to reference how they'd do something, how they'd navigate it, they had answers. Not only did they have answers, they had professionals representing that, you know, uh, area. Is it, is it Goldstein, uh, who's the property development for Stamford Bridge? He would have, He's an expert on that. He'd tell them how to do this. You might have one geezer saying, oh, like, well, this is how we'll do that. This is how we'll do this. And ultimately, if you come into a bid and, and with that much, like, professionalism and, let's be real, preparation... That's what's going to win you uh, the bid, which it did for uh, for bowling. The bid is a collective effort with Clear Lake the majority owner. So this is something we haven't really spoken about on the channel. Clear Lake is where the bulk of the money is coming from. I've been referencing Todd Bowley because he's leading and heading the consortium and because he's the guy who runs sports teams. He's the one who comes with the philosophy, the ethos, the statements of, you know, using data. Like I've been, like many of you, I've been watching videos of Todd speak about, uh, you know, baseball teams and the players and how he needs to, like, uh, what's it called, innovate how players play and, you know, the versatility and stuff and, uh, you know, his stance and sport. And that, for me, is the philosophy that led my drive to to want Bowley the most. Sorry, guys, I'm a bit sniffy. I got bloody hay fever. But in terms of the bulk of the finance, it is coming from Clear Lake. It's something that we've referenced before a little while ago, but we haven't spoken about it recently. Um, the majority owner and a range of impressive voices inputting. So loads of voices around the bulk of the money there. Um, Burdad Egbali is pretty hands-on and engaged. He's a big football fan also. But Bowley, as a minority owner, plans to assume day-to-day control. <laughs> Excuse me again. So essentially, Bowley will be the Roman Abramovich. That's what you. That's what you need to know in terms of like, right? Who are we going to buy? How are we going to do this? Who's going to manage our team? What are we going to do with the women's team in the academy? You know, because ultimately, the ownership in the last twenty years, it's it's been Roman Abramovich. He's he's decided. He's been the day-to-day control. Yes, Marina Granov Sky is like run it, but in terms of the decision making, it's been Roman. And this essentially is what Todd Bowley would be doing. Johnny Goldstein, brackets, and the support of David Hickey, in brackets, really impressed Chelsea. As previously reported, the Bowley group has always had the strongest and most detailed plans for the redevelopment of Stamford Bridge. They have been confident for weeks of winning. Because they, they just laid it down. Like, Johnny got... So, the Goldstein's the Tottenham fan. Some of the time, you'd be like, he's the Tottenham fan. Yes, he's the Tottenham fan. <laughs> but if he had anything to do with the redevelopment of Tottenham Stadium, he's the one. He's the one you won. Because they absolutely nailed that in every single way in terms of the size, the modern, likeness, the atmosphere, everything. So, um... Yeah, essentially, like I said, it's just earlier reference in the aforementioned. They had all the right people presenting the right stuff, and they were like, yeah, they nailed it, basically. Absolutely nailed it. So let's talk about Ratcliffe. Jim Ratcliffe's last-minute 4.25 billion bid took Bowley and the, fu- and the two failed suitors by surprise. 
Ratcliffe initially expressed an interest in March, but then decided not to formally bid. Last week, then, he saw a window of, a, of opportunity as the sale dragged on. So this is peculiar. It's like... He's like, ah, sod it. Go on then. Here's 4.25 million. Like, how do you make a decision like that? And why so late? Yes, there's like speculation and reports that he has been thinking about it for a while, but didn't bid. But you've got to bid. You've got to like do your due diligence in the process. Um, let's read on. Interestingly, sources tell me Ratcliffe bypassed Rain and by dealing directly with Chelsea was confident in entering the race. He has not to date been told his bid was too late. But Chelsea will prioritise Bowley, meaning Ratcliffe has lost out of his control. Has a lot out of his control, excuse me. So, yes, Bowley's gone through the system. He's impressed everyone. He's being prioritised. So if nothing goes wrong, he'll uh, assume control of Chelsea, seemingly. The two other points which are key, Ratcliffe's bid isn't astronomically higher than Bowley's since price includes charitable donation. And Ratcliffe, like Pagliuca with Atalanta, must address ownership of Nice. That makes competing, uh, completing uh, the Chelsea Football Club sale in days, as he, sa- uh, as he says he can, unlikely. So he says, look, I can get this done in days, but again with Atalanta, Nice, if they're, I mean, they're in, you know, they could get in the Champions League next season. They're a point of top four in Liga. It would really, really complicate it, and that's stuff they need to consider as well that maybe they haven't considered. And yeah, so his bid wasn't that much higher as well, which is interesting. It was just a charitable donation, but the money's still there. But in terms of like the sale money, I don't know. It's it's not as easy as, oh, this guy's paid more. Let's go. Um, final two parts of it. Ratcliffe's offer clearly puts pressure on Bowley to wrap up the sale quickly. And it's clear Chelsea and Abramovich, brackets, who failed to agree a price with Ratcliffe in 2019, are open to abandoning the formal sale process and considering rogue bids if it doesn't work out with Bowley. So yeah, if it doesn't work out with Bowley, go on then, you got a load of money, let's go in. But again, to reiterate, Bowley is the preferred bidder and the group is confident that Ratcliffe's offer won't affect anything. They have always said, if selected, they see no reason why they can't complete the sale before Chelsea's special license expires on May the 31st. So they're saying, yeah, we can get it done, mate. You know, you let, you let us in. You've said everything. We, you've said yes to everything we've presented to you. We've got the money. We've got the expertise. We've got the personnel. We've won pretty much the fan base over. I think the majority of the fan base is uh, Team Bowley or Team Todd, as my friend Alex would say. Um, why, unless something comes up from like the darkness, like a skeleton that we don't know about, I think it's probably sweet. And when it comes to Jim Ratcliffe, um, I don't know, man. Like He's really, really rich. But I read the article by The Athletic, I think it's by Matt Slater, that really didn't post, post him in a, a po- in a good light. Like, no matter what your political stance is, if you're an Englishman or, or, or you know, a Brit, he's um he's a Brexiteer, so he's he's, pos- he's um, pro-Brexit uh, Tory that um, keeps all his money in a tax haven in Monaco. <laughs> Brexit means Brexit, but I'm not going to pay taxes. I'm just going to put all my money over there. Um you know, he's got apparently problematic elements to his business. He's always in fights with trade unions as well as governments. And um, and for what it's worth, he's a boyhood Manchester United fan. I know Goldstein, who's helping on Stamford Bridge, is Tottenham, but he's not. He's just, you know, an element of the consortium. Um, it's a bit peculiar. I don't want to completely say Ratcliffe's an awful choice. Clearly, some people like the idea of a really rich individual. Again, it's not a consortium, so there's a benefit to a rich individual. But... Um, I haven't like emotionally aligned with him, especially from what I read in that athletic article. But you know, if he comes in late and he's the owner of Chelsea, it's better than the Ricketts. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. Do subscribe and please do drop a like if you enjoy the content. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, there's been a- <laughs> usually there's an end screen, but my switch is broken. So to those of you who got to see this part. Wicked. See you soon.